I got some new stuff for upgrades to my truck. So I'll say right off the bat, I am not sponsored by e-trailer in any way at all or the manufacturer of the components that are in this box. Um, I paid full price for all this stuff because I wanted to make some upgrades to my truck. I ordered air suspension kit for my 2016 F350. Um, I tow a lot, as you guys have probably seen all my videos, between my tractor, my camper, my box trailer, and uh, another smaller box trailer I have. Um, the air ride suspension with the wireless remote and the built-in pump. We're going to go ahead and get this thing installed. First thing in the instructions is basically figure out a plan for the installation. We need to figure out all the mounting locations for the air compressor, the ECU, the air tank, understand where the airbags are going to sit at so we can get those mounted in a little later, understand the routing of the wiring harness and the airlines. The easiest way to go about doing that is to get all of those fixed points installed. So the very first thing we're going to do is get the air compressor, air tank, and the ECU mounted under the truck. In my case, I bought a mounting kit. Mounting kit as it comes to me in the existing configuration is going to work very well for my install. I just feel that I'll be able to make the install a little bit cleaner and things a little bit more compact by modifying the kit quite substantially, but we're gonna go ahead and cover that right now. So I have a few of the components here on the table we're gonna work on. What we're really focusing on is the mounting kit that I ordered, which was an extra part, and it seemed like a good idea at the time, but to be honest, the amount of modification I'm gonna do to this, for my specific case, probably wasn't worth the money. The three things we need to get mounted are the ECU, the air compressor, and the air tank. I was under the impression this mounting plate would mount all three of these items to the frame rail under the truck. That is not the case for this specific kit. This kit is only designed to mount the air compressor. So this is our mounting plate. We've got to get rid of this center plate and we've got to figure out how to mount our air compressor, our tank, and our ECU on this plate. And clearly that's not going to work. So what we're going to do is get a piece of cardboard out here and make a template real quick. This is how I think I'm going to mount this. We're going to go ahead and mark this all out. I'm also going to reduce some of the size of the plate all this extra metal. The front of the truck, we will put a bracket on this side, which will work here. But then the distance back on my frame rail, there was interferences for the bracket back here. So I ended up having to move the bracket forward to this location. We are gonna go ahead and cut off the back of this bracket and start fabricating this plate out of steel. Looks pretty good. It's a little bit uh, different shape, but to be honest with the plasma cutter, that's kind of what you get sometimes, unless you get a CNC table, which I don't, but I'd love to get eventually. Well, the mounting plane looks a little different at this point. So you can see my cardboard template behind it. Pretty different. So I ended up having to clearance big chunk out of here and here. So we're gonna throw out the air compressor on here. Pretty good. Looks like we could try the air tank on. Elongate those just a, about a sixteenth on each one. The controller module. And that is going to mount over here. So this is a push to connect fitting that the compressor comes with, and it is a half inch, I believe. Uh, the instructions say to engage just by two threads. I'm gonna go ahead and get it tight so that I know it won't leak. Okay. Out of the back of the compressor, 
It's a small hole. This hole is the air inlet, and there's a fitting that the compressor comes with that I put a little bit of thread tape on to seal. That's just more to keep dirt and water out than is something from leaking it. So we're gonna thread that in and we're gonna tighten that up. That will receive a hose. So just to get an idea of how long we need to be. Very lightly put that in there, not hard yet. It's very important to cut this incredibly straight. They sell a cutter for this if you're not confident that you can do this. Um, I am confident that I can cut this straight with a razor blade. They specifically say not to do this. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. So those are push to connect fittings. It is installed. Now it's important that you have a loop and that the loop or the hose are not touching the compressor because the compressor gets hot. So that's gonna go right about there. Okay. And actually installed just like this. So this is compressor to tank, tank to unit. So there's an exhaust port right here to put in. This tube is only supposed to be 16 inches long. In my case, I'm only going to put it about this far because I don't want it to be dangling underneath my truck too bad. And this one just stays open-ended. Just like that. And it stays open like this. So I want to start running the wiring now that we have the pump under the truck. And the kit comes with the wiring harness, which is this mess. So I know this end needs to go right about here because that's where the pump is actually mounted under my truck. Turns out the best place to bring that wire up is actually over here. I'm gonna have to run it up and over the top of the motor. This wire is the farthest one from the compressor, so I want to mount it first. A fuse holder, I can put that holder down in there like that, and then the fuse can go into it and be easily removed. So we can go ahead and run a self-tapper down through here. There we go. I'm gonna snug that up just a scope. There we go. We'll route nice and neatly around here to the terminal. And several wires back up in here are going to a body ground screw. So I'm gonna undo that screw and put this ring lug, excuse me, this ring lug up there. There's a 20 amp fuse that I need to get out. All right, so we got that in there. And then that goes back into that slot. So that basically recompletes the existing truck circuit and that allows me to get another circuit for the air compressor. We've got this extra loop of cable. I run it on top of the frame mount between the body of the truck where an existing wireway was already at and we've zip tied it all the way up through the engine compartment. So we need to get this slack pulled out, which fortunately is pretty straightforward. Our excess wiring harness needs to get coiled up. Now one of the things we need to plug in is the controller to the bottom of the CPU. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So that just plugs me right into the bottom. All right, there is a relay with a self-tapping screw. 
that we need to get mounted. And it looks like that relay can mount right here. There it goes. All right, relay mounted. And now, throw the relay in. The last connection I need to make is to the pump. We've got a supply and a neutral or ground, and the neutral to ground is actually gonna go back to that screw I just installed, which, so that sucks, but that's life sometimes. Now the last connection we need to do is the pump. So this is the jump stop, and we need to get up in here with our 5 8 wrench and get this thing off of here. Oh, I'm gonna be pissed if I just strip this one too. This little thing right here, this little nut, was stripped out. I could not get it to come off. You can see the corners are rounded. So I had to go through all that cut trouble to get this off because I didn't use penetrating fluid. Use penetrating fluid. All that being said, use penetrating oil. Save yourself this hassle. This was an extra 35, 40 minutes of crap that I didn't need to do because I could just use penetrating oil and let it sit and work on something else. <laughs> so on the left side of the truck, there is a bolt that retains the bracket on the aft end or the back end of the urea tank. And that bolt is right here. So we need to undo that bolt and then pull the nut cert from the inside. So that bolt will get thrown away, it does not get reused. We have got all of the interferences out of the way on the truck and now it is time to install the bracketry that holds the airbags in place. The first thing we need to do is get the upper left bracket installed. The bolt that goes through the bottom of this bracket, you can see this center hole has a taper to it. So this bolt will go through the bottom, through the spacers, through the frame rail, and be held in place with a nut, just like that. This is going to use the hole that the jounce stop was installed in. put our spacer plate on and a quarter, so a half and a quarter inch spacer plate. We're gonna run our bolt up through the bottom. Okay. Holy mackerel, what a pain in the butt. Well, we need to get ready to mount the air spring. We need to get the air fitting installed in the top of this first. That is one of these guys. And it's gonna go right in the top and we're gonna snug it down. It says go hand tight and then engage two turns of the red Loctite. Nine sixteenths. It's right over the top of that and it does. So while I'm screwing with this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one just because I like doing similar things at the same time. We go. Air fitting installed, so we can set that bag back to the side. What we do need to do is get this airbag put up under the truck. Let's go get this under the truck. So our air spring can be squished down, and there's a hole for the thread to go through and then an alignment pin, and we're using the forwardmost alignment hole. It's time to get the left side bracket installed. We need to get some nuts and bolts loosely put into bracket in order to allow it to fit over the top of the stop for the jounce bumper. Our lower bracket is now in place. We're gonna take our U-bolt, come around the leaf spring, and line it up into the upper set of holes. Put our bolts on hand tight. 
as you can see, that still allows us to move the bracket around in order to get the airbag mounted to the bracket. So underneath, this strap goes under the axle, and we have a carriage bolt that drops down through that. We're going to install that nut hand tight. Now that I have everything loosely installed, I'm going to use my jack and come up underneath the axle. I can mount the bracket to the bottom of the airbag. Spin the lower carriage bolt bracket back in place. It's time to get the right side upper bracket mounted. So this is the other side and you can see we have our bracket and this is that big washer that has the pin on the inside of it that lines it up into this oblong hole in that frame. So now we've got to figure out which spacers we need to use to get us where we belong. And it looks to me like a half inch plate and we're gonna use a quarter inch plate with that. So because this airbag has the exhaust pipe next to it, we have to install a heat shield. The heat shield gets mounted on top of the airbag. This is the heat shield. So we're gonna put the airbag in here and the heat shield is basically going to get sandwiched between the top of the airbag and the mounting bracket. Before we snug that down, now that the airbag is in place, we're going to get the lower bracket installed. Time to snug up all of the bolts on this airbag. All right, we need to get the one of the inner connections put together. This is a pre-made bracket. Uses a couple of zip ties to attach. I ordered this as an extra piece for the kit, and we're gonna get it put together inside of the bracket right now. So this is a push to connect fitting. So we just uh, put a washer on there, put another washer on there, put the nut on. So it goes together like that. Throw a wrench on here. Connection point for my hose, my pump hose. We're going to install the fill valve adapter for, so in my case, I'll be able to unscrew this cover and connect my air hose to this and I'll be able to pump up tires. This just gets attached to the towing hitch. So in my case, that's just gonna end up right here where I can get to it pretty easily. And then we'll run an air line from there back to the compressor. So we're running air lines and we're gonna start, we're basically right where the spare tire would go. And this brass connection here is the fill valve. And we need to get from here forward 
passenger side. We're down to the point where I need to install the air pickup line, which is this line here with this filter on the end of it. And it goes on the air intake on the side of the air compressor. And I'm going to route this up inside the fender well back up this direction uh, as high as I can possibly get it to keep it away from any dirt or debris, water, or stuff like that, so we don't suck anything into the pump inadvertently. One of the very last things I have to do is make the connection to the battery. Put our cover back in place. Well, we're on to the last step before we turn it on and test it, which is getting the remote set up. Takes uh, two batteries to, uh, what are these, uh, CR2032s. All right, batteries are in. Also comes with a little instruction card and a little instruction card silicone pouch for the card and this is the instructions on left and right air inflation setting it and then on the back you've got your memory settings. So now that I have the batteries turned on in this thing and we see it works, we're going to go turn on the truck and start the airbags. So the compressor's on. Remote is on. This is the inflation hose that the kit came with. On one end, you've got like a bike style pump. This is a connection for a Schrader valve. And on the other end, you have an inflation valve. So in my case, we installed a Schrader valve connected to the air system underneath my bumper right here on the towing hitch. So the Schrader valve end goes to that connection. And then I have an air hose that's long enough to reach all four tires of my truck and hopefully my camper tires, which I'm gonna test before we are in a situation where I would need to be able to inflate my camper tires. But as you can see, this thing works really well. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got a lot out of this one. Uh, I hope I showed enough detail for you. If not, leave some comments or questions down below. I'd be more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. I will say there's a lot of other videos out there that cover smaller portions of this install. So maybe the air compressor or the airbags all by themselves or even running the hard wiring harness or the airlines. I've seen videos of just those things. I hope you guys uh, were able to get some useful information and make a determination if this is the right system for you and if this is something you are willing to tackle yourself. I hate working on vehicles and I'm not good at it. So. Hopefully a lot of you folks out there that might have a, let, might have a little more experience with working on vehicles, uh, this probably would go a little easier for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Definitely hit that subscribe button, always helps me out in the long run. Check out some of these other links. I'll have my garage series of videos and I'll have the house series of videos down here. Until next time, thanks for watching.